everybody, it's Nick Taylor from the Crafty Gents, and today we're in Leslieville, Toronto, Ontario, with Connor Ducars, who's the head brewer at Black Lab Brewing Company. What's up, man? All right, man. Thank you. Thank you for having Pleasure us. Pleasure for you guys coming down. Yeah, thanks for having us, man. I really appreciate it. Uh, what beer do you guys have for us today? Uh, so today we're sipping on the Sitting Pretty American Pale Ale. So it's a, uh, it's kind of our take on the style. So it's a bit of a blend between you know, like your New Age East Coast hazy with a little bit of bitterness from your West Coast. Um, and then we hit it with a little bit of rye malt just to kind of give it a little bit of complexity through the through the body. So not right. just to kind of separate the beer from all this these you know hundreds if not thousands of pale ales, that pale ales and IPAs yeah. in the industry right now. So we hit it with that. We also uh, it's primarily dry hopped with citra, but we also use some Barber Rouge, which is a, a French hop from the Alsatian territory. So it's a pretty new I don't know kind of this. <laughs> yeah. It's, I mean, we got like I just have you know hop suppliers yeah. show up and they have cool stuff so I, I try it and I tried this and loved it in this beer so another kind of ingredient that we think kind of separates the beer from everybody else's right. uh, uh, hoppier beer so it's uh, relatively light sitting at four and a half percent so it's it's I think got enough body and enough ABV to kind of carry all that hoppy flavor without being too overwhelming and with it being pretty sessionable and you can sit down and have a couple and not right. you know get knocked out Sweet. Um, so it's kind of our one of our two kind of approachable beers um, we don't really at least not yet we don't do kind of a, a blonde ale a Kolsch a, you know a light lager or anything like that right. so this is kind of one of our beers that when people walk through the door that aren't really into craft per se we can kind of throw this at them and it's not too overwhelming that they're not going to just get turned off so right. it's also kind of one of those gateway beers on top gateway still having beers. enough yeah, yeah. <laughs> still having enough kind of flavor and complexity to make it interesting for your your knowledgeable kind right. of craft heads sweet so we try it yeah man. let's try it out cheers black lab and yeah i was actually packaging this today so instead of pulling off the taps i just ripped it out of the bright mm -hmm. tank and it is super fresh. Yeah, about as fresh as you're going to get. It's it's surprisingly like a light feel compared to like when you look at it, yeah. right? It's yeah. super hazy yeah. and super like almost like heavy it looks like, mm -hmm. but then when you taste it, it's light, it's refreshing, it's mm -hmm. smooth. It's really good and then also flavorful too. Yeah, it's like got a little bit of citrus, a little bit of yeah. kind of complexity there, but definitely trying to make something that it's crushable and really refreshing. And yeah. And a bit more of a malt base to like an, an American Pale Ale as yeah. opposed to an IPA, right? Mm. Where it's like all hops, that one yeah. side of it. Yeah, for sure. When uh, when did you guys start actually brewing beer? Like you opened in what, November, right? Was that six months or seven? October. Months? October, right. Yeah. So when did you start actually brewing beer in here? In here, um, like I was, I had a little homebrew system that I was nice. working off of for, yeah. I probably started on that on weekends in like August, probably mid oh, to nice. late August was yeah. when I was starting to kind of um, feel out what we wanted to do here. Yeah. Um, and then we started brewing. It would have been two, like two, yeah, two weeks before that. Right. Um, early October. Right. So it's super fresh when you guys open. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that makes so sense. like when we opened kind of the whole point was we'd fill all four tanks, turn all four tanks over in those two week time and then open on those four. Yeah. Which we probably could have stocked a little bit more because yeah. we sold out of a lot really quickly and it was certainly a pretty stressful time for me personally, just right. trying to make sure we had some options on tap for people through that crazy early day rush, right? Yeah, and it was like a big rush, yeah. right? Like it was yeah. walking pretty quickly, that's sweet. When you talk about like you just started, right? So yeah. there's still a feeling out. Are there styles that you guys are not doing right now that maybe you're like super pumped to get into, to experiment with? Um, like I I come from a homebrew background. It's yeah. kind of how I got into this. So I think you'd ask mo most homebrewers and they tell you that they want to brew everything and anything, yeah. which I'm kind of, I don't like to shy away from styles, but from the start, I kind of made the choice to, I don't want to say zero in too much because we're definitely open-minded with what we're going to brew, but right. we're kind of trying to stick to those American craft, which is big. It, it yeah, goes course. all the way to throwing pastry in your beer and doing crazy stuff right. um, to like American wild ale. So we've got a barrel aged program. We're doing some mixed fermentation stuff with that. Mm. And then as far as the old world stuff, I'm trying to sit with primarily within kind of German styles and some bordering countries, but I'm sticking away from English styles. I'm sticking away from Belgian styles, not because I don't right. want to brew them or enjoy the styles, but just because I don't want to get too scatterbrained with our offerings and try to kind of zero in a little bit into this one world because I don't want to be 
an yeah. everything brewery. I want to kind of yeah. master you want to specialize one thing. in a few exactly. things, right? Yeah. yeah, there's a difference between like doing a bunch of stuff, but then doing like maybe a fewer things, yeah. but really well. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's I feel like that should be appreciated for mm -hmm. sure. And then you can do them to your own. Yeah, and right? I think the product shows when yeah. you kind of take on that model. And there's some really great breweries out there that have kind of taken that model. And I think personally, they're some of my favorite ones. Yeah. Um, and I think when you want to do, say, English styles, you want to do Belgian styles, you kind of have to dive all the way into them. Same with German styles. So it's it's tough from like a yeast management and ingredient management kind of perspective, as well as just recipe formulation to be too scattered. Yeah. Um, like managing five or six yeast strains in a small brewery is just impossible. Yeah. So I definitely kind of push towards that German right, area right. quickly. Personally, I'm not the big, like the biggest quick sour drinker. I'm not the big biggest fruited sour drinker. Right. But people love them yeah i'm and one of them I'm yeah them. It's, i mean it's it's awesome when i walk into the brew pub or the brew house on a, on a saturday to do a quick job in the brewery and you look around the place and there's all these people drinking pink colored you know, pink beers. colored sour beers yeah. and loving it and i mean that's i think that's why most of us got into it and that's certainly something that gives me a lot of joy as a brewer is just looking across a tap room or a bar or something and seeing people just enjoying the product, getting, you know, into conversation with friends and meeting new people, whatever yeah. it might be. That's kind of what it's all about. So there's still a lot of joy in that um, yeah. from a brewer standpoint, even if it might not be my favorite beer to drink. Right. Yeah. It's, it's cool because like those kind of beers open up like I feel like a different audience for too, sure and like get a different crowd of people yeah. in here. Like you mentioned the kombucha too. Yeah. That seems like it would open up like a whole other like range of people mm -hmm. that would come in just for a drink. Yeah. The kombucha thing is so cool, I think. I think mm -hmm. it's such a unique thing. I don't know if I've ever seen another brewery do that before. I know it was big at, at West and like the Vancouver yeah. breweries. It was like that almost makes sense, everyone actually. had a kombucha on yeah? top. Okay. Um, and we got hooked up with a company around the corner called Moore's Kombucha. So they oh, just cool. had like Queen and Carla. Sweet. So like a literally a 10, 15 minute walk away and they're making some really great stuff. So it's been cool to kind of get them on tap as well as we're, we've been a guinea pig for them on a couple of occasions. Just nice. they whipped up something that they're you know, they're not sure. Yeah, about they're not sure about. So like, yeah, you know, buy three and we'll give you the fourth keg for free. Just let us know what you think about it, which right. is cool to kind of be part of their R and D program. And yeah, to, yeah, to that's get really cool. And then they're local as well. Yeah, so yeah it's super like local. All the people around there, mm -hmm. you're promoting them too, yeah. right? Um, and what else you said? You said there's like iced tea and stuff you're looking to. Yeah, so those are all things we're looking into for the summer. Right. Obviously, serving it is an interesting because it's an uncarbonated product, so you got to push it differently than beer. Um, yeah. So that's something that I've. It's like just me toying around a little bit yeah. um, with that. And then cold brew coffee, there's a, a cafe around the corner um, that roasts their own stuff. So yeah. we're kind of, we're just setting up a collab with them and then uh, we're gonna hopefully get them on tap. That's really brew, sweet. Nitro syrup cold brew is Yeah, dope, so. I know. People were asking me like, especially doing this stuff now, yeah. people were like, you must drink so much beer. I'm like, if there's anything that I drink too much of, it's coffee, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Like there's nothing I drink more than coffee. Yeah, it's they amazing. say like, why the wine industry and winemakers are fueled by beer and then all the brewers are fueled by coffee. Yeah, so it's, it's just like a stream. It's a trickle down. <laughs> yeah, trickle down effect. Yeah. What are coffee drinkers fueled by? I don't even know, just by sleep or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a vicious cycle. <laughs> that's sweet. And so they're right. called Sidekick, by the way. I'll give them a little shout out. Sidekick, awesome. that's yeah. the coffee place. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So they're like a comic book slash coffee place. Oh, that's nice. Awesome people. And that's really right cool. around the corner as well. So it's good to keep it in the little Leslieville yeah. family. And the community is pretty cool. And it seems like that idea of kombucha and coffee and, you know, iced tea, if it mm -hmm. happens, those things like that, I feel like. You know, I've done, I'm not an athlete at all yeah. by any means, but there's been times where I've done certain like events and then leading up to that event, I'm like, I'm not going to drink yeah. just to see how I'll do, yeah. whatever. And like, that's always super easy to do. Like, it's really not hard to drink. The only time where you're like, this sucks is if you're in a social setting yeah, like totally. this, where people are like, where's your drink? You mm -hmm. should drink. So I feel like having kombucha just totally negates yeah. that. You know? And it's different than having like, a can of Diet Coke or exactly. something. Like, it, it then people feels, are like, what are you drinking that for? Yeah. You know? Exactly. But this is on tap. You still feel like, yeah. and, it's, and it's delicious too. Mm -hmm. So it's like cool in that regard. Yeah. And it kind of feels like, you know, obviously being at Black Lab, the, the obvious thing everyone talks about and like that is promoted is like the fact that dogs can come yeah. around. It's such a fun environment. Mm -hmm. But it seems like Black Lab really promotes like a healthy lifestyle. Totally. Uh, with that. Yeah. Like something as simple as like bike rack mm -hmm. or like lockers for runners, mm -hmm. right? That's such a big part of this place, right? Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. I mean, Billy is is huge in the running community. Um, I personally have been kind of an active guy my whole life. So mm -hmm. it's, it's definitely something that being in the industry of beer, it can be it 
pretty brutal yeah. kind of slippery slope. Um, they so seem like weird are. things to combine, like being active and then also drinking. Yeah, drinks. yeah, yeah. But it's, I mean, like McKellar is a huge, big, like popular example of a company that, I mean, they're, they have McKellar Running Club that's a global right. phenomenon and they're such a huge company and they're also one of the better breweries in the world. So it's, I think it's kind of common for people to want to have that that workout and that kind of push to be better, but then there's a treat at the end. Yeah, right? exactly. We're all simple. Yeah, and then you, you feel like, like I've earned this. I'm yeah, to exactly. Do this. Exactly. That's the best part. Yeah, that's cool though that the character of like of Billy, like you mentioned, like bleeds into what this place totally. is about. Yeah. Right. It's pretty sweet. And then like you guys have a ton of events too mm -hmm. in the community, which are it seems like they they work just with what we were saying, like. You have like tons of food trucks mm -hmm. and where you can just like eat this delicious food. Yeah. And like Mark's Pizza was here. Yeah, yeah weekend, he's, right? he's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And then at the same token, you'll have like yoga mm -hmm. and like hosting a little lemon ghost race. Yeah. So it feels like it's still like that balance of like having fun and then also yeah. still being active. Totally. Right. Yeah. yeah. We actually had a mom's yoga group set up over there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Too. Yeah. So yeah. I saw that actually. Yeah. Moms with their toddlers or their babies come in and just all doing do yoga. Do yoga and the baby's just while out. <laughs> They're just having a good time. Yeah, yeah. That's sweet. Hey, well, thanks so much, man, for telling us about everything. Appreciate it. Really appreciate it. Yeah, man, thanks for coming down. Thank you very much. Next time we'll have to get Snoopy in here. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's a, it's important business, I guess. Yeah, he's got a business meeting. <laughs> he's in the room upstairs. Exactly. He's meeting with all his other yeah. friends. Yeah. Sweet. Well, thank you, man. Pleasure, man. It.